Sergeant Sadowski, could you please start your recording? PC recording has started. All right, thank you. Um, uh, give me a second, hold on. Cloud recording and backup recording is starting. Uh, good evening. Welcome to this remote hearing of the New York City Advisory Commission on Property Tax Reform. Everyone, please turn on your video at this time. Silence all electronic devices. All written testimony can be submitted at nyc.gov forward slash property tax reform forward slash testimony. Again, that is nyc.gov forward slash property tax reform forward slash testimony. Thank you, Chair. You're ready to begin. Thank, thank you, Sergeant. Um, hi, my name is Mark Schramm, I'm the Chair of the New York City Advisory Commission on Property Tax Reform. Today's Zoom hearing is the first of five borough-based hearings on the preliminary report of the Advisory Commission. The Brooklyn Zoom hearing has been scheduled for May 27th at 6 p.m., and hearings will soon be scheduled for Queens, Bronx, and Manhattan. If you're unable to attend your borough's hearing, please know that members of the public may attend any hearing regardless of their home borough. As a reminder, all people wishing to testify must register on the Advisory Commission's website at least 24 hours prior to the start of the hearings. Also, for members of the public who are listening who would like to submit written testimony, they may do so at any time at nyc.gov slash property tax reform slash testimony. In January 2020, the commission released 10 preliminary recommendations to reform the property tax system. Hearings were initially planned to begin in March 2020, but delayed due to COVID-19. We request that public testimony specifically respond tonight to the commission's 10 recommendations. I will now read the commission's 10 preliminary recommendations. One, the commission recommends moving co-ops, condos, and rental buildings with up to 10 units into a new residential class, along with one to three family homes. The property tax system will continue to consist of four classes of property, residential, large rentals, utilities, and commercial. Two, the commission recommends using a sales-based methodology to value all properties in the residential class. Three, the commission recommends assessing every property in the residential class at its full market value. Four, the commission recommends that annual market value changes in the new residential class be phased in over five years at a rate of 20% per year and that assessed value growth caps should be eliminated. Five, the commission recommends creating a partial homestead exemption for primary resident owners with income below a certain threshold. The exemption would be available to all eligible primary resident owners in the residential class and would replace the current condo co-op tax abatement. Six, the commission recommends creating a circuit breaker within the property tax system to lower the property tax burden on low income primary resident owners based on the ratio of property tax paid to income. Seven, the commission recommends replacing the current class share system with a system that prioritizes predictable and transparent tax rates for property owners. The new system would freeze the relationship of tax rates among the tax classes for five year periods, after which the city would conduct a mandated study to analyze if adjustments need to be made to maintain consistency in the share of taxes relative to fair market value borne by each class. Eight, the commission recommends that current valuation method, methods should be maintained for properties not in the new residential class, which includes rental buildings with more than 10 units, utilities, and commercial. Nine, the commission recommends a gradual transition to the new system for current owners with an immediate transition into the new system whenever property in the new residential class is sold. Finally, 10, the, rec the commission recommends instituting a comprehensive review of the property tax system every 10 years. I would like now to introduce the public to the other members of the commission, um, and we'll go around in alphabetical order, but since this is Staten Island, it just so happens that it starts with Alan Capelli. So, Alan, you're on. Hello there. Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Mayor de Blasio and uh, Speaker Corey Johnson for giving me an opportunity to take on the latest heavy challenge facing New Yorkers and especially facing Staten Islanders. Uh, and I have uh, uh, enjoyed it to date. Unfortunately, a year ago, we got shut down because of COVID. 
We had done a lot of work until that point, and now we're hopefully ready to uh, uh, come up with uh, final recommendations that can serve as a blueprint for equity for all of New York. But my heart is also looking for equity for uh, Staten Islanders since I have uh, been out here uh, virtually all of my life. Uh, I just want to assure the members of the public that the members of this commission are some of the greatest minds I've met in government. And I'm very confident that together we'll come up with something that will serve the needs of this region for years to come. So uh, thank you for joining in. We will take everything you say seriously and uh, good luck to us all. Carol, you're up. Unmute. Sorry, I thought I was gonna be unmuted. Okay, I'm Carol O'Claricon and I too am looking, really looking forward to hearing how people are reacting to this. We worked really hard uh, on this proposal. I am currently uh, an adjunct professor up at Columbia University, but I have in my past been both the finance commissioner of New York City and the budget director of New York City. So no good deed has gone unpunished and here I am for more work. Thank you. Mr. Knuckles. Good evening, Chair Shaw and colleagues and uh, to the uh, citizens of uh, Brooklyn. Uh, good evening, my name is Kenneth Knuckles. I am currently uh, the Vice Chair of the New York City Planning Commission. I am a lawyer with a background in public service. I served along uh, Commissioner O'Clarican uh, during the Dinkins administration where I was Commissioner of General Services. I reside in the Northeast Bronx and I'm a, an owner of a two family uh, home where I've resided for 38 years and I look forward to uh, the input and testimony from this evening. Thank you. James Parrott, you're next. James Parrott, Director of Economic and Fiscal Policies at the Center for New York City Affairs. Um, I am, am an owner of a two-family home in Park Slope, Brooklyn, uh, and have been for the past 25 years. Uh, this has been a very intense uh, process, unfortunately interrupted, as many things were, by COVID. Uh, it is an eminently serious proposal. We're all aware that property tax reform um, has is long overdue. Um, and has awaited a thorough comprehensive um, examination, which I think we have, uh, have begun. Uh, we're very much looking forward to getting uh, input and feedback from um, uh, property owners th uh, across New York City, beginning in Staten Island this evening. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, Elizabeth Velez. Good evening, everybody. And I echo all the commission members um, with the desire to create a property tax system that's fair, predictable, uh, and transparent. I am a private business person running a construction firm um, in New York City all my life, born in Brooklyn. Uh, I'm a renter, was a renter in Manhattan, and I'm now a renter in the, the Bronx. So looking forward to hearing all your comments regarding the report that was prepared last year. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Elizabeth. So um, in, in addition to um, the commission members, which all just introduced themselves, we, we have with us um, a number of ex officio members of the commission, um, both from the city council as well as the mayor's office. So they are both here as ex officio members and are listening to the testimony. Um, with that, I'd like to turn it over to our moderator tonight, um, Rebecca Chasen, to walk us through the public hearing part of this process. Thank you, Chair Shaw. Uh, my name is Rebecca Chasen, and I am counsel to the New York City Council's Committee on Finance. Before we begin, I want to remind everyone that you will be on mute until you are recognized to speak, at which time you will be unmuted by the Zoom host. If you mute yourself after you have been unmuted, you will need to be unmuted again by the host. 
please be aware that there could be a momentary delay in that process, so please bear with us and be patient. I will be calling on panelists to testify one by one, so please listen for your name to be called. During the hearing, Commission members, you have the ability to unmute yourself, so please do so at the appropriate time when you have questions, but please remember to go back on mute once you have concluded your questions. We will now hear testimony from the public. Uh, for panelists, once your name is called, a member of our staff will unmute you and the Sergeant at Arms will give you the go ahead to begin. Please wait for the Sergeant to announce that you may begin before delivering your testimony and you will have two minutes to present your testimony. We will first hear from Assembly Member Kusick, followed by Assembly Member Tanusis. Time starts now. Thank you. Thank you, members of the commission. I want to thank uh, all of you for, for having this. And I want to applaud you for having it by borough because uh, representing Staten Island uh, and many of you who are from Staten Island understand the unique needs, particularly when it comes to property taxes uh, here in our borough. Uh, because I we have two minutes, uh, I, I am going to submit a written uh, testimony uh, to address uh, each of the, uh, the uh, uh, points uh, in your report. Uh, but I wanted to just uh, focus on one because of the short time limit uh, in that uh, and, and give you maybe some, some research to help you with it. On point six, uh, the commission recommends the, uh, the circuit breaker, uh, which I, I strongly uh, agree with you. I think it is a great tool uh, to uh, provide fairness in, in the uh, property tax uh, system in New York City. Uh, and I just want to uh, let you know that the New York State Assembly and Senate, we have a bill uh, that's in the legislature already that addresses the circuit breaker uh, system. Uh, and I do think that this is one of the fair ways of addressing it and addressing the fairness issue uh, of uh, distributing property taxes. Uh, the bill number in the assembly is A4744. Uh, and I do think that it is something that we could work together with. Uh, it is a bill I sponsor and Senator Grenardis in the Senate has sponsored for the last two years. And I think working with the city and working with the commission, uh, it is definitely something that uh, I think will address the, the fairness issue uh, particularly the, the one that Staten Islanders uh, face uh, when it comes to property taxes. I want to also say that I hope that we can continue this commission, your great work, uh, you know, on a daily basis. I, I would like to have it uh, occur each year to have you continue on uh, because I think the commission would be a good watchdog as we move forward with any of the issues that you come up with in your report. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Assembly Member. We will now hear from Assembly Member Tanusis, followed by David Carr on behalf of the Council of Minority Leader Stephen Matteo. Time starts now. Thank you so much. Uh, to the commission for, for having me here today. Uh, happy to see that there's many Staten Islanders uh, on this commission. My name is Michael Tanousis, and I'm the assembly member representing the 64th Assembly District, which encompasses the East Shore of Staten Island and a portion of Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. Uh, as many of you know, uh, there is a se severe inequity uh, in this city when it comes to property taxes. Uh, property owners throughout my district, both in Staten Island and Bay Ridge, uh, have been treated unfairly, uh, paying higher property taxes than other areas of the city. Uh, the Staten Island median effective tax rate is 1.12%. Citywide median effective tax rate, I'm sorry, the Staten Island median effective tax rate is 0.112%. The citywide median effective tax rate is 0.95%. In the district where Mayor de Blasio resides, they pay 0.26%, the lowest rate in all the five boroughs. Uh, on average, Staten Islanders pay property taxes uh, on 98.5% of their actual home values, while the average for homeowners in the other boroughs is about 87.2 to 88.5%. Uh, when Mayor de Blasio ran for office back in 2013, he ran on a platform devoted to ending the tale of two cities, uh, which he vowed to do something in regards to the property tax inequalities. Uh, obviously to date, nothing has happened. We've had COVID, 
but I'm happy to see that we're taking that, that you're taking on that battle now. These public hearings are a long time coming. An overhaul is desperately needed. And as I told Mayor de Blasio back in February during the budget hearings, uh, New York City residents are fleeing in droves. Our fellow residents, especially Staten Islanders, do not feel that they're getting their fair share from our local government. Uh, reports have been released recently that have shown real estate revenue in nearby New Jersey has increased as a result of New Yorkers moving there uh, from New York City. So something needs to be done. It needs to be done now. I thank you so much for doing this. Uh, and, uh, and on behalf of the Staten Islanders, uh, thank you so much. And I hope to see good things from you guys in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will now hear from David Carr on behalf of Council Minority Leader Stephen Matteo, followed by Assembly Member Michael Riley. Time starts now. Good evening. As was stated, my name is David Carr, Chief of Staff to Council Minority Leader Stephen Matteo, and this is his testimony presented on his behalf. Thank you for the opportunity to share my thoughts about the Commission's preliminary report. We know it's been a long process that was unavoidable thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic, and it puts additional pressure on us for us to complete this work this year. The Commission's first and most important consideration that must guide all deliberations is first, do no harm. While unintended consequences are inevitable whenever government seeks to reform a complicated system, the Commission must make every effort to ensure that any reforms made do not make the situation worse. In fact, I would like to state clearly and unequivocally that the result of this process has to be lower property taxes for Staten Islanders. Property taxes are too high and they're ever increasing. Now more than ever with the economic devastation caused by the pandemic and inflationary pressures in our economy, the steady creep of property taxes must be reversed. It's vitally important if we expect to continue to have a middle class in the city. The tax system has long been confusing, antiquated and inequitable. The average New Yorker cannot explain how their property taxes are determined. And it's a welcome uh, recommendation that the commission wants to adopt an easily understandable system moving forward. Predictability is another important goal. From year to year, homeowners should have the ability to predict approximately what they will be paying in the future. For many years, middle class homeowners justified staying in our city because property taxes were lower here relative to nearby suburban communities in Jersey, Long Island, and the Hudson Valley. But now we are seeing more and more flee the city due to the increasing uh, property taxes and closing the gap between nearby counties. In that vein, I would like to point out that Recommendation 5 would create a partial homestead exemption for primary resident homeowners with an income below a certain threshold. And similarly, recommendation six, the circuit breaker is also tied to an income, a specific, an unspecified income. We need to define what that income and that threshold is going to be. And it's key for these recommendations in order to accurately reflect those who actually need help. If we set those thresholds too low, then these recommendations will not help Fine. any of our homeowners who are not wealthy by any average definition. They have to be carefully crafted to include middle-class homeowners, many of whom are struggling to meet ends need. We have an opportunity to make changes to make our property tax system fairer, more predictable, and more transparent. I look forward to working with the commission to ensure that we provide a fair property tax system that provides meaningful relief from burdensome taxation now and into the future. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now hear from assembly member, Michael Riley, followed by Elena Imperato. Time starts now. Assembly member, you may begin when ready. Good evening, everyone. My name is Michael Riley. I, I'm uh, the assemblyman for the 62nd Assembly District, uh, which represents the South Shore of Staten Island. Uh, first, I just want to uh, thank the uh, Property Tax Commission uh, for taking on this work and uh, making sure that uh, we address these issues. I appreciate that the Property Tax Commission is, is making an effort this evening to hear from Staten Island homeowners who have carried the burden for many years now of rising property taxes. Part of me understands that this is a result of rising home values, a sign that would otherwise be a good indicator of our community being a desirable one to live in. However, this has led to us to discover inequities within our city's property tax system. I understand that there are recommendations for possible reforms being made through the state legislature, which would fall within my purview as a state legislator, but the root of this issue is connected to the city's antiquated and inaccurate assessment of class one properties, many of which are located on Staten Island and the outer boroughs. 
based on statistical data, as opposed to in-person assessments by qualified assessors, which is actually already mandated by state law. While I, I am happy to see that the Property Tax Reform Commission is attempting to move the needle on this issue by finally receiving testimony again, the bottom line is that we need to move quicker. The clock is ticking, and each minute we wait to address the crushing cost of living here in New York City, which includes, includes the out-of-control property taxes, is another person, another family, that will flee this state for somewhere with less taxes and quite frankly, a much better quality of life. I hope that the members of the Property Tax Reform Commission listen with full ears to the testimony provided tonight, not only from the electeds, but mainly from uh, the residents of our community. Because if we fail to address these concerns, New York City, City will continue to head down this road of fiscal decline. I thank you for everything you're doing. And I wanna echo, echo my colleague, uh, Michael Cusick's uh, sentiment that I think it would be great to have the commission uh, in existence and continually monitor uh, because this issue is not going to go away overnight. And I think it's a long-term effort and I appreciate all the work that you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you. I will now hear from Elena Imperato followed by Sal Albanese. Time starts now. Hi, good evening. I just want to say thank you to the commission for giving me this opportunity to speak. I manage a 72 unit co-op building on Staten Island. And um, there's so many, they're paying more taxes per unit than most uh, single family residential homes on Staten Island. There's very, um, it's based on comparable uh, rentals instead of comparable sales in the building. And buildings that have a higher sale basis on Staten Island are paying less in real estate taxes for their whole building than we are. We're, we're in the Diamond Hills area of Staten Island. And the co-op tax abatement versus the partial homestead exemption for primary owners with income below a certain threshold. I believe that all co-op and condo owners, regardless of income, should receive this exemption if, if, if this is their primary residence. And I've already submitted um, documentation to you via email in regards to the property taxes, how much they've uh, increased over the years for the building. I hope someone gets a chance to take a look at it. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you for your testimony. I will now hear from Sal Albanese, followed by Michael Ayanuso. Time starts now. Uh, good evening. Uh, this is former Councilman Sal Albanese, and it's great to look out at the commission and see some very brilliant minds that I've known for a long time. So I'm really, uh, really optimistic about the commission. Um, l let me let me say that uh, this is a difficult task that you have uh, that you've taken on, and uh, I appreciate it and thank you for doing it. But it's clear that the uh, inequities in the system have resulted in, in uh, Staten Island residents and, and other middle class and working class neighborhoods in the city uh, being taxed unfairly for years. And uh, I, uh, the pro this property tax system is a mystery. Uh, nobody could figure it out. It's overly complex. It's, uh, it's opaque and it's arcane as well as unfair. When you have a homeowner on Staten Island who owns a, uh, a home worth $600,000 paying $8,000 in property taxes, and then somebody in Park Slope who owns a home that's worth over a million dollars paying four grand, you can understand how frustrating it is and angry people get. And it also erodes the faith, uh, faith in government. Um, and, and I hear this all the time around Staten Island. It's, it's a major, major issue. And as was pointed out by other legislators, folks leave the city uh, because they can't, they're property, they're, they're property rich and cash poor. And, and these taxes continue to go up and they're unfair. Uh, we need a, a property tax system that's predictable, transparent, the opposite of what we have today. Some of the recommendations that you put forward are really excellent. They're good. Uh, I, I echo Michael Cusick with the circuit breaker, uh, number six. I think that's an excellent idea. However, any recommendation that places a heavier burden on working a middle class and working class 
folks in this city that are property owners is a non-starter. Um, and I, I go back into the late seventies when there was a huge I'm movement. There was, there was a movement to uh, tax folks at a hundred percent of their value and, and real estate value. And people went berserk. It was a huge backlash. Whatever you do, it has to be fair, predictable and politically acceptable. You have to make it politically acceptable. Although, although it's not going to, otherwise it's not going to work. Thank you. I will now hear from Michael Iannuso, followed by BJ Dandapani. Time starts now. Yes, hello. I want to thank the commission today for listening to us. I'm a homeowner in Staten Island. My name is Mike Iannuso. I would also like to thank Councilman Matteo and Kusick, in which I live in their district. Um, the reason for this, I, in fact, I ac actually talked to Alan Capelli, and I want to thank him for his service with the MTA and being on the advisory commission. I'm a four-year Navy veteran with an honorable discharge from 1975 to 1979. I worked for the Transit Authority for 40 years, and I lived in Brooklyn. I was born in Brooklyn, and I lived in Staten Island. I retired in June of 17. Governor Cuomo finally passed the buyback bill S7160 and A9531 back in 2016. He signed this buyback bill and I'm asking the, uh, the uh, Department of Finance and the commission to lower property taxes on Staten Island for all its citizens. Also, uh, for the main reason why I'm calling is that I would like for New York City to opt in on the Cold War veterans exemption from real property taxation. Uh, when Governor Cuomo uh, uh, passed that buyback bill, it said that any military person would be considered a veteran. Now, being that I live in Staten Island, I would have to move out of the city and move uh, somewhere else in the state to get my cold water, uh, cold war veterans property tax exemption, which I think is very unfair. We've been trying to change this for a while uh, with, with the help of uh, Assemblyman Kuzik, Senator Lanza, and also Councilman Matteo. And I appreciate David Carr for uh, being there today and Alan Capelli. And I just hope that we can opt in for Time. that property tax exemption for the call veterans. I want to thank the commission for their time, their consideration and all their efforts from now and in, into in the future. Thank you so much. Um, we will now hear from Vijay Dandapani followed by George Wanaka. Uh, Mr. Dandapani, just want to make sure that you're at a safe place um, to testify. Yes. Um, thank you. Um, thank you. My name is Vijay. Well, thank you. My name is Vijay Dandapani. I'm president of the Hotel Association. I want to thank the commission members for their efforts over here. And I know the focus has thus far been on residential. I've testified before in earlier hearings. Uh, I represent the hotel industry with 50,000 workers pre-COVID and over 300 hotels in our association. Our industry was very severely affected by the COVID crisis, more so than any other. And the V, unlike others in tax class four, bear the property tax burden ourselves. And while it has trended down a little bit this year, despite revenues going down, going down 85%, um, really the trending down of the RPT bill for us was about 25% on average. Uh, so we, we are suggesting some sensible solutions to these very critical issue, issues just so that hotels can reopen more quickly. Um, one of the, uh, and I've submitted written testimony, bearing in mind we have only two minutes, uh, but at a minimum we'd like to uh, get another look at appraisals uh, for, and the FFNE discounts that we are traditionally used to uh, to be uh, taken another look at uh, on account of the fact that during COVID uh, we've had to spend considerably more and to reopen we'll be spending considerably more on FFNE and that really plays into our assessed value. 
So we urge the property tax commission to consider that aspect with regard to us being in tax class four. Our revenues are day to day, unlike others in class four, which really has spread over a year. Uh, we, we all know that the hotel industry plays a critical role in the economic comeback of the city. And in order to contribute to this effort, hotels must first get through this economically difficult time. And the tax burden is a critical part of that uh, in, 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 in enabling us. I thank you all for your time. I thank you, Commission members, for your devotion. It's a very important task. Uh, we realize there's inequities all around, but we, we too look for transparency and predictability. Thank you again for your time. Thank you. We will now hear from George Wanaka, followed by Jeffrey Golkin. Time starts now. Well, first, I want to thank the commission for taking on this task. Obviously, it's a very difficult one. My name is George S. Wanaka, and I'm the Conservative Party candidate for the 50th District for City Council. For the last eight years, and even longer, Staten Islanders had borne the brunt of unfair policies from New York City bureaucrats. It's mainly why we call ourselves the forgotten borough in Staten Island. Staten Island is one of government that works for them and is always willing to pay our fair share. But unfortunately, we've never gotten our fair share in return. Now, there are a lot of reasons for this, but this hearing doesn't have time for that. This hearing is about something that we should have been done, but never has been addressed in the last eight years. Staten Islanders property taxes have gone through the roof in recent years. Yet other boroughs, specifically as said earlier, where our mayor owns property, gets different treatment. Let, let me say that again, different treatment. We talk about a tale of two cities. Well, you can't get any different than that. In an era where Staten Islanders are struggling to get back on their feet after the COVID-19 epidemic, we must address these inadequacies now. Staten Islanders cannot simply afford to wait while people are still struggling to pay their bills to get back on their feet, and while the city still tries to figure out how to pay for it all. Like all Staten Islanders work remotely, a lot of these hearings could have been done over a year ago, just as we've all worked that way. Any decisions made by this panel and the wonderful work you ladies and gentlemen have done is likely gonna take more time to implement. And quite frankly, Staten Islanders just don't have time for that. Enough is enough. And we really need this change yesterday. Thank you very much for your time and I appreciate the opportunity. Hello. Uh, I'd like to just address uh, Mr. Wanaka for a second, if I might. Uh, I agree with you, George. Uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. I agree with Michael Cusick and Assemblyman uh, uh, Tosulis and As Assemblyman Riley that uh, the state legislature needs to make sure that this effort doesn't die at the end of this year. We are going to put out a plan that is going to be a blueprint for reform. It's not going to get passed by the legislature this year or by the city council this year because it's not going to happen before the end of the year but we need to make sure that this does not go away. And the best way to do that is for the state legislature to ensure that there's some oversight on this issue. We'll draw up the blueprint. Uh, you know, uh, once we get all of the testimony from around the city, but we need the state legislature and the city council to uh, make sure that this effort doesn't die at the end of 2021. Thank you. We will now hear from Jeffrey Golkin, followed by Laura Timoney. Time starts now. Okay, my name is Jeff Golkin. I am an attorney and advocate for property owners for the past 40 years. The commission's recommendations involving creation of a new tax class and assessing it 100% of market value will have a devastating effect and impact on the smallest and most vulnerable property owners, single family homeowners like uh, Mr. Uh, Ayanuso, 
uh, mom and pops, small businesses, small walk-ups, four to 10 units, and small co-ops, condos, two to 10 units. These recommendations were pre-COVID and may have not accounted for the changed market, for changed behaviors, for changed consumer habits, and the financial impact of the pandemic on small property owners. Assessments for the smallest properties will increase substantially from assessments currently based upon effective market value to 100% based upon true market value and sales. Protective caps enjoyed for the past 40 years will be eliminated. To cushion the blow of these higher assessments, which the commission acknowledges will in fact occur, you've recommended uh, uh, five-year phase-ins, partial homestead exemptions, and circuit breakers. These additions will cause as much confusion and unfairness in property taxation as the commission seeks to eliminate. And yet no detail has been provided to explain how these exemptions and circuit breakers will compensate for the removal of protective caps or the elimination of co-op and condo abatements. Page 66 of the commission's report acknowledges that income thresholds for primary residents to be eligible for homestead exemptions have not yet been determined. And until these details are provided, these recommendations cannot be considered. And what of tax classes two, three, and four, uh, those uh, owned by uh, Ms. Imperato of the 72 unit co-op in Staten Island, or Ms. Dandapati, the class four. These issues have to be addressed in these classes as well, or it's a missed opportunity. It must be part of any comprehensive tax reform. The concern I have is that the smallest and most vulnerable of property owners will suffer detrimental consequences from their recommendations in their current form. Time. And, I, and I would be remiss if I didn't recognize Ms. O'Clarican, who in 1990 was my featured speaker at a major event at the tax uh, reform uh, uh, issue on uh, the city bar. So it's been, it's been uh, 30, 30 some odd years and she's still at it. And so I thank her and all the commissioners for addressing these issues and the concerns that I have raised. I've also submitted uh, written testimony. So thank you again. Thank you. We will now hear from Laura Timoney, followed by Mary Ann Rothman. Time starts now. Good evening. My name is Laura Timoney. I am a lifelong New Yorker and lived on Staten Island for about 29 years now. My husband is a retired first responder. And just to give you a little context here, um, I read through all of the 10 recommendations and I'm probably still just as confused as I was before I read the 10 recommendations. Um, since we bought our house, our property taxes when we first moved here were just under $1,300. Um, and our house value was about $200,000. If our house value went, it went up about four times it's, uh, it's, it's asking price when we bought it. If our taxes only went up that much, they'd be $5,200 now, but they're not, they're over $9,000. My husband's pension, our taxes, our property taxes are 25% of his pension. My sisters in New Jersey and Monmouth County pay less property tax than I do here in Staten Island. So uh, the other piece of this, right, just if you're, if you're working on a budget in a house, um, we have no free way of getting onto Staten Island, right? We've got bridge tolls on top of that. I can remember testifying um, when Guy Molinari was borough president about um, the toll increases on the Verrazano. Back then, we actually paid more in bridge tolls than we did in property taxes. So we get slammed left, right, center, um, and it's very hard to actually stay here. So I ask you, you know, the 10 recommendations, I still can't figure out what I'm gonna be paying. Please consider lowering property taxes out here. They are ridiculously expensive. They've gone up exponentially. Um, and to be honest, I don't know how much longer we can live here if uh, numbers keep increasing. So thank you, I appreciate your work and love the senior citizen discount and all for veterans getting discounts as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll now hear from Marianne Rothman, followed by Camilla Hanks. Time starts now. Good evening, and thank you for this opportunity to testify. My name is Marianne Rothman. I'm the executive director of the Council of New York Cooperatives and Condominiums, 
representing hundreds of homeowners and housing cooperatives and condominiums in all five boroughs of New York City and beyond. Since 1990, when we founded the Action Committee for Reasonable Real Estate Taxes, we've advocated for fair, equitable, and easily understood property taxes for all of New York City. We thank the Advisory Commission for its preliminary report. These 10 proposals set us on a pathway to having one class for all of the city's residential property with easily understood assessments based on market prices. We also thank you for recommencing these hearings which were interrupted by the COVID pandemic. We do have comments on several of the proposals. Today, I'd like to comment on proposal five, which suggests that the homeowner exemption would be, and I quote, for primary resident owners with income below a certain threshold. We contend that every New Yorker whose home is their primary residence is entitled to a homeowner exemption. Homeownership is a commitment to New York City that deserves acknowledgement. We would, however, welcome a discussion centered around gradation in the percentage of this exemption. We have further comments about seeking a much fuller gamut of circuit breakers, about a longer phase in of the new system, and we object very strongly to the harsh welcome stranger provision of proposal number nine, which would be completely unworkable in housing cooperatives in any event. We look forward to future hearings and we thank you for this opportunity to express our views. We'll now hear from Camilla Hanks, followed by Michael Batson. Time starts Ex excuse, now. Excuse me, is it possible for me to go back to Ms. Rothman for just one second? Yes, Commissioner. You, ha you, have, a, you have a full a um, set of proposals, a full, a, a lengthy set of reactions here that we can look at, Marianne, because these were very thoughtful what you were raising here. Uh, the, the, um, my plan is to, to visit with you in every borough and to uh, comment on a different proposal each time. Well, have you put something in writing, I guess is what I'm asking work, for. Work it would be very it. useful. Yeah, it would be very useful. You, Thank you, you. You want it earlier than the end of the hearings? No. Yes, I, I would like it as soon as possible. Um, well, I will do but, my best. But whatever you can do. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. We'll now turn to Camilla Hanks, followed by Michael Batson. Time starts now. I want to thank the um, thank you so much to the advisory commission for hosting this. I see all of my colleagues here, and I'm really happy that we've taken this time to talk about such an important issue. So, hello, my name is Camila Hanks, and I'm a candidate for city council. I'm a property owner in Staten Island and founder of the Minority Women in Business and an advocate for my community. I come before you to talk to you today about equity. You hear regularly from those on Staten Island that we are the forgotten borough, but a lot of times that is true but it's not true when it comes to when it's time to collect. We are definitely not forgotten. Staten Island pays the highest effective property tax in, rate in the city. This body is well aware of that fact and the fact that homeowners in predominantly minority neighborhoods are over assessed by an average of $844 per, per homeowner. We all know that as property values increase, so do assessed values and our taxes but I've seen property ta taxes more than triple in less than 20 years. You know what hasn't tripled? Our income. Because while the commission is aware of these facts and these statistics, I just wanna put some humanity on the conversation. I purchased my home when I was 27 years old, making $33,000 a year. With the current tax system, none of my children live here. I can't see my grandchildren, and that is because of of the tax system and the high property values that we've assessed. And my kids can, cannot live here as, long as, as well as other young people who have left here. So to keep this really short, we are doing the governors of other states a huge favor by giving our hardworking residents and tax base to states that are more inviting to homeowners and residents. I thank you very much and I appreciate the opportunity. We'll now hear from Michael Batson, followed by Barbara Bowen. Time starts now. 
Uh, hi, uh, thank you for this opportunity to offer the commission some testimony. Uh, I'm here as a member of the Professional Staff Congress, the union that represents 30,000 faculty and staff at the City University of New York, CUNY, and also as a lecturer at the College of Staten Island and a lifelong SI resident. Um, you will hear right after me from the president of the PSC who will provide greater context. We want to call your attention to a significant source of untapped revenue from the property tax exemptions given to private universities in New York City, specifically New York University and Columbia University. We are proposing a rethinking of those tax exemptions as one way to invest in and provide needed resources for New York City's public university, CUNY. We fully acknowledge and respect the incredibly important role both NYU and Columbia play in the intellectual and cultural life of the city, but it is also the case that both institutions benefit tremendously from the services and cultural milieu of this city. We also recognize that they are not the schools where a majority of New York City high school graduates go. Roughly 60% of New York City high school graduates will attend a CUNY college. NYU has an endowment of a little over $4 billion. Based on the Department of Finance's formula for determining market value, um, the properties that they hold in Brooklyn and Manhattan amount to about 3.7 billion. The potential foregone tax revenue from that would be about $188.5 million. Also based on the Department of Finance's figures um, for Columbia, which has an endowment of a little bit over $11 billion, um, their property holdings would amount to 5.6 billion with a corresponding property tax of 274 million. That is a total of 463 million, close to half a billion dollars in foregone property taxes per year. These numbers, which were originally prepared for testimony in 2018, um, so these figures could be low. We propose in the spirit of equity, which you know, a lot of this conversation tonight is about, um, rethinking this. While NYU and Columbia pay no property taxes and the students get the benefit of small classes, full-time professors, readily available counsel, and abundant technology, time CUNY struggles. Um, I've spent the last two semesters teaching students in crisis. They or their family members have been on the front lines of this pandemic. They're delivering our groceries. They're working in the supermarkets. I have students who have been evicted, sleeping in their cars, doing their assignments on their phones because they don't have a computer or Wi-Fi. Um, in some ways, this pandemic has only highlighted an existing structural crisis of inequality, and we would like a rethinking of these tax exemptions to bring a little bit more equity to these schools in New York City. Thank you very much. Thank you, and we'll now hear from Barbara Bowen. Time starts now. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, members of the commission for the tremendous amount of work behind every line of the recommendations and for the opportunity tonight. I'm going to pick up where uh, my colleague Michael Batson left off, um, and he was speaking about an existing structural inequity. Uh, the first commissioner who spoke, uh, Alan Capelli, spoke about the uh, proposals as a blueprint for equity. We feel there is a significant missing element in that blueprint for equity and its urgency has been revealed in especially dramatic ways over the last year. As Michael said, um, we believe that the commission should consider whether it is still appropriate to exempt the big private universities from virtually all New York City property taxes. As Michael said, the total value is something around a half billion dollars um, and specifically, we ask that you consider whether the two largest private universities, NYU and Columbia, both of which receive enormous benefit from New York City public services, should continue to be exempt from almost all property taxes. I want to be clear that this is not an attack on NYU and Columbia. Um, I, you know, they add tremendous value to our city, to the cultural life, to all of our lives. It's for me as an academic, a, a deep value. Uh, but when the um, state law on non-taxation of public universities was set up, I don't think it contemplated endowments of this size. Um, and that's why we focus on these two large universities. But the benefits they uh, receive from the city include um, all kinds of city services, such as transit, parks, firefighters, sanitation, and police, all of which they receive without that uh, tax being paid. 
And at the same time, New York City's public university, where the majority of college students go, including thousands on Staten Island, is starved, systemically starved in a way that we feel has origins in institutional racialized austerity. And the other private universities do not pay the um, property taxes. We believe that this is an opportunity that the council or that the commission has missed to highlight uh, not only uh, revenue neutrality, but foregone revenue, which could be collected, perhaps not even the full extent of their property tax uh, foregone Time. revenue. But uh, uh, thank you, I'll just finish the sentence. But in a payment in lieu of taxes, a pilot, which could direct some of that revenue to the city earmarked for the thousands, hundreds of thousands of students who attend the City University of New York, CUNY in substandard conditions. Uh, so if we are seeking equity and fairness through property taxation, and I commend you for that, a significant untouched uh, re resource here is the as a potential of a pilot, specifically from NYU and Columbia going to CUNY, and that would be a major step towards systemic equity and ending systemic racism in this city. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd just like to respond to uh, Ms. Bowen and uh, actually Mr. Batson as well. I remember vividly uh, your testimony last year. Uh, this report that we issued was not meant to be a total uh, so, uh, salvation of all of the issues. It was to get some things down there. Uh, we take your uh, suggestion seriously, as well as the other people who testify. And hopefully uh, at the end, we'll come up with something that is as fair as we can get it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Capelli. And thanks for your phrase of blueprint for equity. We think that uh, a pilot for CUNY, designated specifically for CUNY students, um, should be part of a blueprint for equity. And there's a big opportunity right now in front of the commission, especially after this horrible year of COVID, which has exposed and deepened every existing inequity in the city. This is a big chance and we call on you to take this bold step and call for a pilot. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now hear from Representative Nicole Maliotakis. Time starts now. Uh, thank you and good evening to all the members of the commission, all the participants today. Um, I, first of all, I wanna thank uh, our com commission for uh, having this round of hearings, particularly Alan Capelli, who I think brings a strong voice for the people of Staten Island, a much needed voice on this commission because Staten Island uh, is particularly affected uh, by the current property tax structure. Uh, the, the two main points, because I don't have a lot of time, that I want to make is there's no reason why the people of Staten Island or Southern Brooklyn should be subsidizing the property taxes of other parts of the city. And under the current structure, that is exactly what happened. I have oftentimes used my own home as an example, comparing it to Mayor de Blasio's home and the fact that I pay thousands of dollars more in property taxes, despite the fact that the mayor's home in Park Slope is valued at three times the amount of my home. That is the type of structure that we need to reform and that what your, your um, recommendations seek to do. So I would urge you to continue to look at, at the ways that we can rectify this so the working class communities of our city are not subsidizing the more affluent and wealthier communities of our city. That's the first point. The second point is the need for New York City to have a property tax cap. The rest of New York State, every municipality in our state has a 2% cap. Somehow New York City was left out of this and it was before you know this mayor was elected, it was before this speaker was in the state assembly, before the Senate president was in the state Senate. So I think this is an opportunity with new leadership to be able to reform that to ensure that New York City is not left behind, but indeed has a property tax cap as well to the levy. The levy has gone up well over 50% under Mayor de Blasio, even though he's not increased the tax rate. By implementing a cap to the levy, we can make sure that uh, we, we hold the line on property taxes. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Um, I believe at this point we've called on everybody in the Zoom who is registered to testify, but if we've inadvertently forgotten to call on someone and you'd like to speak, um, please use the Zoom raise hand function and, and we can call on you now. Okay, seeing none, Commissioner Shaw, um, everybody who has signed up to testify has done so. Okay, thank you, Rebecca. Um, I, I'd like to thank all the members of the public and elected officials who joined us tonight to give feedback on the commission's preliminary report. Your comments are important as the commission develops its final recommendations. As a reminder, the commission will be holding a Brooklyn-based Zoom hearing on Thursday, May 27th. Hearings in Queens, the Bronx, and Manhattan will be scheduled soon. Members of the public may attend any hearing regardless of their home borough. If you wish to testify, you must Register on the Advisory Commission's website at least 24 hours prior to the start of the hearing. Also, for members of the public who are listening who would like to submit written testimony, you may do so at any time. To register to testify or submit written testimony, please visit the Commission's website at nyc.gov slash property tax reform. Finally, I would like to thank the Commission members for their time tonight and especially the staffs of the city council and the mayor's office for making this hearing possible because we couldn't have done it without the staff that did the work behind the scenes to make this go as smoothly as it was. So thank you all and uh, good night. Mark, uh, yes. before we leave, uh, number one, I wanna apologize to my colleague, Alan Capelli for my faux pas uh, at the beginning. And I promised to say Staten Island before the uh, Brooklyn hearing. Uh, that's that's the first thing. Uh, secondly, uh, hopefully we will get a transcript of uh, the testimony tonight, which I found uh, quite informative and, and thought provoking. I'm staying up tonight to type it up. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I'd just like to thank uh, my vice chair on the city planning commission, Kenneth Knuckles for uh, uh, his apology and I accept it. Uh, I would also like to say that uh, just as a personal experience, being on this commission, walking into a room with the members of the commission and the ex-officio members and the staff from the mayor's office and the staff from the city council has been an extraordinary experience. Uh, recognizing that I'm probably the least smartest person in the room. And these are people who have tremendous experience and have put in a uh, enormous amount of time on this. So I uh, want you all to know that uh, I'm watching them. I have to work twice as hard because they're very talented, but they have uh, your interests at heart. And uh, I'd also like to say that I'm here. My daughter is about to give birth. I'm going to become a grandfather for the first time tonight. And uh, I'm sharing that with you all uh, as my friends and neighbors. And uh, thank you. Mazel tov, as they say in Ireland. Congratulations, Alan. Congratulations. Congratulations, Alan. <laughs> what a grandpa you'll make. Congratulations, Alan. <laughs> all right. Thank you again, everybody, for your time. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see you at our next mm -hmm. hearing. Yeah. Thanks. Bye-bye.